Hello everyone and welcome back to the breakdown. Today we're going to be talking about Minecraft server lag. Now here on our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, we've struggled with lag in the past, but if we go ahead and do a lag check down here, we'll be able to see we're running at a smooth 19.8 TPS with 61 players online, over 10,000 chunks loaded, all sorts of awesome stuff there. So uh, yeah, basically what I'm saying is I know a thing or two about diverting lag, especially considering we're in the most laggy version of Minecraft ever. 1.13 is actually the laggiest version of Minecraft and we're currently running 1.13.2. So yeah, I know a thing or two about fixing lag in Minecraft and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's go ahead and uh, I guess jump on into it. Now the most important part about diverting lag in Minecraft is pretty simple. You need to make sure that you're on a good server host. And we use here at play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server host in the multiverse, Apex Minecraft Hosting, and they were actually awesome enough to sponsor this video. You can check out Apex Minecraft Hosting at the first link down below, and it is actually who I would recommend for lag-free server hosting. They have incredible hardware and will work with you to help improve your server and make it lag-free. So go check them out. First link down below, the breakdown .xyz Apex. We use Apex ourselves. Now, after that, that's when things start getting pretty cool. We can start doing configurations. We can start doing things like that at that point. So let's just go ahead and jump on into it. So if we go ahead and switch on over to tutorial mode here, we'll be able to see paper. Now, you've got a good server host, but that only goes so far because if you have a great host, but you're running bad code and bad software on it, it's not going to matter. So even if you're using Apex, you need to run the most efficient server software out there, and that is going to be this right here, and that is paper. We run paper ourselves, and you can find paper linked along with Apex in the description down below. As a matter of fact, Apex actually has a one click install paper. Anyway, I'll stop talking about Apex now. You just need a really good server host to be able to stop lag on your server, and Apex is by far the best one out there to help you do that. Nevertheless, here we are on paper. Very simple. Download the most recent version. Keep it up to date, and that'll go a long way to reducing lag on your server, right? So basically, this right here is a big, big help, and if you don't have a paper server, you need to go ahead and switch over to paper. If you're running Bucket or Spigot, it's a simple drag and drop. Basically, replace your jar file, and that's it. You don't have to worry at all if you're running bucket or spigot because paper is a pull from bucket or spigot basically it's a distribution of those as its own thing with even more stuff one of the great things about paper is it actually adds an async chunk loading back into 1.13.2 this was removed from spigot in 1.13.2 paper said we're gonna add it back in and they've done that and that helps lag a ton so first and foremost Get a good server host with Apex Minecraft hosting. Secondly, you need to make sure you're running the most optimized version of Spigot, or actually a bucket, and that is paper here. And then after that, you need to optimize those and customize those correctly. This guide right here is linked in the description down below. It is on SpigotMC.org, and this is the guide to setting up bucket, Spigot, paper, and even your server properties file to reduce lag. Go down through here, set all of this up. I'm not gonna go through all this because it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Goes through everything. It was last updated, if we scroll down here to the bottom, we'll be able to see it last edited on November 27th, 2018, and it is very, very up to date. So go down through here and do all of these enhancements and change all this stuff and optimize all this. I'm not going through all of it because it's a ton and it's going to be different per server and he does a very very good job at explaining that. However, there is one thing that I want to mention here and that's this. Pre-generate your map. Basically, whenever you set your world border, which you should have one, go ahead and pre-generate all that using a plugin. And as you can see right here, world border is the plugin he recommends. Go down through there, do world border fill, and then wait. It's going to take a long time. We did it, and when we did, it lagged our server for forever, but it has helped perform it so, so much since then. Now, once you've done all that, you'll still possibly have some lag, and that's where we can really start helping you. At this point, all I've done is said, get a good server host, get a good server platform, like paper, right? That's what you want to run on, and then set those up correctly using this guide. You can probably figure out that yourself. However, what if you're still having lag after you've done this? This is where it came in for us, right? So what do you do? Well, when you're in game here, what you want to do is do slash timings, paste. Now this will only work if you're on paper. That's why it's so important that you're on paper. Do slash timings, paste. 
hit enter, and then you'll get this handy link right here, which is a timings report. You see that? Click on that timings report, and then go ahead and open that up. I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here to our main browser, and here is our timings report. This is what it's going to look like. Yours is going to look different because you're running it for your server, but as you can see, we are basically constantly having some sort of TPS loss, but it's very rarely felt in game. If you play on our server, you'll almost never feel that lag because we're running on such good hardware over at Apex, actually making up for that tick lag. And actually, if we run a lag check real quick, we'll have a 19 TPS. You see that 19.65? Anything over 18 TPS is very, very good, so you don't have to worry about that. By the way, to run this lag check, you need clear lag on your server. You can do slash GC, I believe, to be able to get that if you have essentials. As you can see, slash GC shows your TPS and all of that information without, you know, running lag check. So that's how you can get that if you just have essentials. Otherwise, if you have clear lag, which we'll be talking about later, you can go ahead and run slash lag space check to get that info. Nevertheless, here's our timing support, right? As you can see, we always have some lag running in the background there, but it's very rarely felt. As you can see, our TPS is always near or around 20, as you can see. So how does this work? Let's go ahead and go through reading this. Now, if you hover over any of these dots, you'll be able to see what the TPS was at that time, how much TPS loss was happening, how many players, how many tile entities you had. That's things like like hoppers and items on the ground and things like that, how many entities you have, that is mobs, and how many chunks you have. Now, chunks doesn't work correctly, in my opinion. I don't have never really went over that. We have over 10,000 chunks loaded on our server, not the amount that it says there. So, yeah, but nevertheless, the rest of this information is very, very accurate. Now, as we can see, the orange is our TPS loss. The green at the top is our TPS. So you can actually have TPS loss without actually affecting your TPS as long as your server is able to catch up and handle it. Now, what is this 25% TPS loss coming from right here? And specifically, let's look at this little area right here. Now, this is our time zone. Currently, this information down here is only looking at the time period between the two blue dots. So I'm going to go ahead and move mine to go there and there and kind of pinpoint in on this little bit of lag right here. As you can see, it spiked up a little bit and we did see a little bit of fluctuation there. And actually it looks like we had a decrease in some of our entities there, which could have caused that issue. But nevertheless, we've got this, we've got this little bitty lag right here and we've got it selected between these two time periods. These time periods, by the way, are set to five minutes. Now if we come down here, we can see the percentage of tick, right? How much of the ticks were laggy and what percentage did this thing take up? Now for us, we have full server tick. Most likely everybody's going to have that, but then inside of that we have tick entities, which is actually taking up 35% of our total tick there, and then we have the do tick right there. So let's go ahead and do tick entities, and then we can see entity tick is taking up then 26% of that, and then we can see entity item is actually taking that up right there. So we probably had a bunch of items drop on the ground right here, and then those items get removed with clear lag, which we'll talk about here in a second. So that's how you can identify that. You're looking for this big total number here, right? How much lag is this having total within these chunks? You can actually play around with this a little bit if you want to see the average lag across that amount of time and what was causing that. As we can see, we have this full server tick, still tick entities, but it actually turns into a falling block if we do the average there. That's why you never want to do that. Just do total, and it's going to give you a better idea. After that, we do have villagers. Villagers are always the biggest lag on our server. Up to 20% of our lag has came from villagers. But if we move this around, it is going to change some. So if we do this entire thing and look at it over that, it's going to change. And I guarantee entity item won't be the number one lag on the server. It'll change to, there it is, villagers. As I said, villagers are always our biggest lag. 7.41% of ticks, also known as 5% of the total there. Then it goes to cows. Then it goes to items, zombies, so on and so forth for entities. Entities are always our biggest issue. But let's Let's say entities are your biggest issue as well. Well, what do you do? Well, we have a solution for that. And you come up here, you do have a plugin like Stack Mob. This is going to combine mobs together to prevent lag on your server. Very, very recommended for most servers. We run it on our server. Something that I would recommend. If you have tile entities causing an issue, like entities floating around, things like that, then you're going to need a plugin like Clear Lag. This can also help with mob lag by clearing mobs out every five minutes. Specifically, hostile mobs can be cleared out every five minutes using Clear Lag here, right? So this is a plugin I would recommend. Now, you might run your timings here. Let me get back over to it. You might have something like this. Let me see if I can find it. Tile entities. Now, you can see hoppers. You might be having hopper lag. We have hoppers optimized, right, using, let me just go ahead 
and see if I can't move this right here. There we go. We have hoppers optimized using the settings here, specifically the ones in spigot.yml that deal with like your hopper timings and how your hoppers move. Let me see if I can find it really quick. There we go. Hopper disable move event right here is changed. We've also changed in our spigot.yml the amount hoppers move to where hoppers move three items at a time. Thus, on our server, we had near zero hopper lag. As you can see, 1% nothing. Mob spawn is actually our biggest tile entity there. But if you have issues with hoppers, you can use a plugin like Epic Hoppers here, which will basically take and make your hoppers less laggy, letting them to do tons of cool stuff. Now, this does hurt vanilla hopper, you know, activity, so most likely don't take this route unless you're taking it from the beginning of your server, which could be a good idea, especially if you plan on seeing a ton of hoppers coming into your server. So yeah, all these plugins are linked in the description down below, and there are different plugins that you can use. For example, spawner upgrading and making spawners have to be upgraded before they can be used and like spawn a bunch of mobs can also help lag with mob spawners, for example, that could help on our server with the entity mob spawner. We don't have any plans on rolling it out though, because overall we're pretty good. Our DPS stays up high 19s most of the time. If we have a drop down, then you have to react to it. Basically, that's how I look at lag. Whenever lag happens, right? you then fix it. Whenever your TPS starts dropping, you then go in, you fix that, and then you move on. For example, we had to do a mass exodus of like villager spawners and stuff like that on our server because we had a bunch of lag. That's now fixed though because we took care of the issue. So nevertheless, guys, that's how you can find lag, that's how you can identify it, and that's how you can stop lag on your Minecraft server. The biggest thing you can do is use this server optimization thread here linked in the description again. That's going to give you a ton of help, and if this ever stops being updated, I'll actually take the torch and update it myself because I think that is very, very, very very, very worth doing to allow people to actually keep their servers optimized. But nevertheless, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com for an awesome 1.13.2 or 1.14 when it comes out. Survival experience. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I am out. Peace.